my charts. Okay, and the first one we should be looking at is the VIX. So uh, the VIX, let me let me talk about what this is uh, because uh, oftentimes when traders understand what it is, they kind of wonder, well, how is this exactly applicable to the uh, to the forex market? And, and it actually has a fair amount of usefulness here. And I want to show you a couple of things that I haven't talked about before because they, they, they haven't existed. These kinds of conditions have not existed in prior presentations. So the VIX is actually, it's a measure of implied volatility. And uh, specifically, it's a measure of implied volatility on the options that are being bought and sold on the uh, S&P 500 index option. So the SPX is the symbol there. And uh, what happens is that when traders get really anxious, uh, one of the things that they do, so I institutional traders in particular, one of the things that they do is they buy options. Uh, the reason why they do that is that uh, y you can, one of the greatest purposes for <laughs> options actually is to buy them as a protective measure against your longer term hold positions. So if, let's say for example, you're holding, uh, you, you're long the market, you're long the S&P 500 essentially, or you're long stock, uh, stocks in general. And uh, you feel like the stocks are going to start to break down and decline. Uh, but do you really want to exit your position? Because that comes with a whole set of trading costs that, uh, and uh, complications and uh, uh, how long have you held the position, etc. So one of the things that you could do is you could buy, you could buy a put option that will actually gain in value as the market drops. So as you're losing value in your uh, long market positions, you're gaining value in the uh, uh, in the underlying put. Well, everybody, you know, the, the traders kind of move in bulk, right? So pretty much everybody gets the same idea at the same time. So if everybody is trying to buy options at the same time, what's going to happen when uh, demand goes up? Well, uh, prices go up, so the prices of those options rise. That creates a rise on the VIX. So what's interesting here is that, uh, and oftentimes what we're looking at with a sentiment indicator is we're looking at uh, extremes. So what we want to know is what, what are the when does the market get to extremes, as well as when does the market show that things are fairly normalized, uh, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. So if we scroll back a little bit, you'll notice that. Um, uh, recently, the market got to a uh, extreme support level. So the, the the market had been here before last October. It was the last time it had gotten down this low. What this means is that option prices were dropping. Uh, well, option prices were dropping over the last, uh, you know, in April, May, and even part of March. They were dropping because the market was uh, uh, because traders were becoming more confident. So they were buying fewer options. So as the market got all, as, so as the VIX got all the way down to 16 we start to get really nervous because we're getting towards an extreme and we think that, well, there's there's the real possibility that the market is going to pop up. So let me say two things here. Number one, for those of you who are probably wondering, I know the kind of crowd that I'm dealing with, uh, you're probably wondering, wow, this thing channels like crazy. Is there a way to trade this? There definitely is. There are options as well as futures contracts on the VIX. You can check it out if you're interested. Uh, you might actually go to www.cboe.com and find out more. Uh, however, if uh, if we're just using this information, and you're, the, the, the second question you may be asking yourself is, well, he keeps talking about this as a stock index, so what does this have to do with the Forex? Well, most of us are well aware that um, uh, that what this has to do with the Forex is that we have Forex currencies that are very sensitive to changes in the equity market. So, as a, uh, so for example, as the market began to bottom out here, you can even see we had the, a, a real extreme couple of days here, uh, here at the very bottom uh, on about 5:15. Well, well, we can we can look and see how that how that exactly what did that translate into? Because what we're anticipating after 5:15 is a higher risk environment, or what we're preparing for is a higher risk environment. Well, I've seen actually a couple of ways that this plays out. Uh, first, you could you could compare this to um, the logical place to look at this would be the um, dollar yen, which is very sensitive to um, equity prices. And the dollar yen, we're kind of dealing with this little rising wedge here, a little consolidation pattern here recently. And if we go to 515, uh, we can find th this was basically the market kind of paused here. 
the dollar yen, which you, if you look at it from the perspective of a short yen position to the long side, so that, that's what would be driving the dollar yen up. Well, the information we're getting from the VIX is that there's a very high risk that, or there's a very high probability that risk is going to go and start to rise. Well, in fact, that kind of played out here on the dollar yen where uh, trade managers such as myself are looking at this and saying, well, this could realistically be the top of this particular trend here which turned out to be the case. So the market has kind of paused here and begun to consolidate, which was triggered by, uh, or information that we could have gleaned from what was going on there on the VIX. There's a, a, a counter to this as well, by the way. I'm gonna bring up the Kiwi. Now, the Kiwi uh, has a different relationship with risk in that one of the things that's, and, and it's something that we always have to kind of sit back and, and think through our minds, okay, so, so if risk is on the rise, if the, if the VIX is at an extreme low and is beginning to bounce up, uh, you know, wh what could be causing that? What's, what's the issue? Well, lately, one of the big issues has been uh, commodity prices. So what's been going on with commodity prices? And the Kiwi, I think, is a, is a great way to take advantage of this to the other side. So you'll notice that uh, around 5.15 or so, uh, that's where my cursor is right now, uh, around 5.15, the Kiwi gets to a low, so it had been losing value against the dollar, and then all of a sudden re completely reverses and goes 200, almost 300 pips to the upside over the next week and a half. Well, that's because the Kiwi tends to kind of follow the VIX. So uh, uh, commodities are kind of a hedge in times of uncertainty. So if uncertainty is on the rise, uh, then commodities may actually increase in value, and, and conversely, the rise in commodities may actually be causing that uncertainty. So it's something that we look at from the pers from two different perspectives. A rise in the VIX may actually cause a strengthening in, uh, uh, and th therefore a um, declining dollar yen. And for different reasons, but but of a similar nature, it may cause a strengthening uh, Kiwi or New Zealand dollar, which will cause a rise in the the Kiwi dollar exchange rate. So let's go back here to the VIX for just a minute. Okay, the and by the way, I w I would mention that it, th this kind of uh, this kind of behavior, when I say extremes in the market, I don't mean just support and resistance levels, uh, although those can be very useful. There's also technical uh, formations that are very representative of what's going on in an extreme market. So here, let me zoom in on an example here that occurred uh, the, the very end of December. You'll notice this little. I'm gonna I'm gonna outline this. This is a formation that I pay a lot of attention to. Island reversals. Anybody pay attention to these out there? Uh, we we don't often spot them in the forex or at least in the spot forex. Uh, no pun intended because. We don't have gaps, but what happens is the market gaps down, uh, channels for a little bit, and then gaps back up. Or the reverse may also happen sometimes. The market gets up to an extreme, you know, gaps up to an extreme high, and then gaps back down. These are real extremes in market sentiment. When you see this gap back up, uh, it's it's a real trigger that there's something going on uh, in the market. Now, if so, if we got to this low. And this uh, this low is being identified by this island reversal, and by the time the market pops back up again on uh, 1231, so pretty much the end of the year, how might we use that information? Well, we would use it in a couple of ways. So number one, if we were long any uh, uh, at the time, if we were long the dollar yen, so you'll notice that uh, if we go to 1231, most of us probably remember this just the start of this panic. Uh, it was up around 114 or so. The market still looked okay, but pretty volatile. And then, boom, the market really declined very fast. Uh, it, it was a great heads up that something was going on and that as risk was about to go up, according to the VIX, we would expect to see the dollar again start to go down. So very useful information. Okay, let's, let's shift gears here just a little bit.